two prices. A slightly more practical example of two variables being measured against each other for signaling purposes is this interesting one that I found online, which is a measurement of Bitcoin lows versus a measurement of Bitcoin supply. Now you can see there's only a few different data points here in this model. However, what it does show is a, so what we have is the Bitcoin price versus the Ethereum price over time. Now, what you can see here is actually quite a significant relationship between the two. It is a little bit variable, which shows that the correlation between Bitcoin and Ethereum isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. However, the linear fit line, the line of best fit, you can see that it represents a relationship, a positive correlated relationship between the two, which can be expected. If you think back to the other correlation charts we were looking at, in your mind, have a think about what type of correlation strength this would show. Is it a zero? Is it a one? Is it a 0 0.5? Have a think about which of those spreads you think most uh, best describes this relationship between the two prices. A slightly more practical example of two variables being measured against each other for signaling purposes is this interesting one that I found online, which is a measurement of Bitcoin lows versus a measurement of Bitcoin supply. Now you can see there's only a few different data points here in this model. However, what it does show is a, uh, a reasonable expectation or at least some sort of a relationship between Bitcoin supply and the lowest possible price that you could expect uh, for that level of supply. The implication being, if you were in the future and you were going through a bear market, potentially an analysis, a scatter plot analysis like this, with some sort of a fit line through it, would actually show you uh, what the lowest price you should be expecting is, or at least within a certain range of variability. Another scatter plot that reveals interesting insights, which could be a thread for future research, is this one here of Bitcoin and Amazon. But here's where it's interesting. This is actually a scatter plot showing the relationship between Bitcoin and six times leveraged Amazon. Does this mean that we can potentially predict Bitcoin's price if we can predict Amazon's price? Who knows? This is a subject for further research and investigation, one which we may cover later on. Now, what can go wrong with scatter plots and what can go wrong with advanced correlation analysis? As we have explored previously, correlation is a linear measurement between two variables. It only measures correlation moving in a straight line, either going up or down, and then it takes into consideration the strength using the spread. However, not all significant relationships are linear. Some relationships move around over time or have different shapes that are just as valid and just as significant as a linear measurement, but are just displayed slightly differently or maybe significantly differently. On the screen right now, you'll see a bunch of different examples. We'll start with some simple ones. You can see here that we have a kinked data set. And if we were to put a linear uh, best fit line through, we would only get a correlation significance of 0.6. This is on the right hand side. However, if we put a curved line through the data, we can see that the correlation is actually close to 0.9. How we measure the curved line, how we decide on the curved line that we put in there, we'll cover that in a later lecture. But just for the moment, understand that different types of data requires different types of correlation analysis, different types of fit analysis, and we'll be covering that soon. Likewise, you can see at the bottom of this display, we have wavy data. If you were to put your straight line through it, you would have a correlation of zero on the right hand side. However, we can see visually that there is some sort of a patterned relationship here. And if we were to apply a uh, zigzaggy best fit line through there, we would get a much higher correlation of 0 0.9. And this is a great example. This further one I got from Wikipedia. You can see that all of these different data shapes all of them have a correlation of zero. However, they all display a significant relationship of some sort. Some of them have patterns, some of them have waves, some of them have clusters like the one on the far right hand side. All of these are examples of data sets that have some sort of significant relationship that cannot be measured by linear correlation analysis. This is very, very important for our further lectures on statistics. So make sure you have a mental note of this. It's only linear data that works with linear models. Now, another thing, what can go wrong with all this analysis? If we have a big cloud of information and we're trying to detect the correlation between these two variables, or we're trying to model the prices, 
We won't get into specifics just yet. However, what we're doing is we're actually taking the one dimensional standard deviation based model and we're applying it over two dimensions. This means that this model is going to be sensitive to outliers because one of the fundamental measurements as we've already covered is the mean, which means it's going to be sensitive to outliers. It doesn't cut off the outliers like the median does. This means that when we're doing our scatter plot analysis, we have to be very careful to look for outliers on one side or another. If you look at the chart that I post up on the screen here, you can see that if we have a group of data and we put a line through the middle, it may have a correlation of only 0.4. Now, if we were to inspect that outlier and understand that it was an error or if it was a special circumstance of some sort that didn't belong there and we removed it, we can bump up the correlation to 0.7. This is a massive improvement, and it means that the model that we're trying to fit with the outlier removed is a better representation of what we're trying to see. To round this out with one last practical model before we move on to the summary, I just wanted to show you this chart of Bitcoin search results versus Bitcoin price. Take a look at this. If we take a scatterplot chart of the Bitcoin price index and we plot that against Google Trends, we can see that there's actually a very strong relationship between people's interest in Bitcoin and Bitcoin's price. This is actually a fantastic way of looking at Bitcoin in the future and understanding how sentiment analysis works. And it's also a bit of a teaser into why sentiment analysis is so important. If people are very interested in Bitcoin, the price is going to go up. If people are not interested in Bitcoin, the price is going to go down. Now, as Bitcoin evolves over time and becomes more sophisticated, sometimes these relationships will break down over time, but that's okay. It's the fundamental concepts that are important to remember. So in summary, scatter plots reveal the information about the relationship between two variables. Correlation can be displayed by the grouping of the data, and correlation can be represented on these charts by the displaying of the letter R. This stands for correlation, and it can move from one to negative one. When looking at scatter plots, a lot of the time the information may end up not being linear. You can force the model to fit by doing certain transformations, and this is a statistically valid way of modifying the data. We won't be covering this here. However, if you wanted to do this, that is a valid method. Outliers can have a massive effect on correlation strength and should be carefully considered as to whether or not they're valid or whether or not they're just an error in the data somewhere and if they should be removed to actually increase the quality of the correlation model. A visual inspection of a scatter plot between two different types of information can reveal important information and can be very valuable for understanding the nature of the data, how it behaves, and whether or not it has any secret relationships that you can exploit over time. Thanks for talking, guys. I'll talk to you soon.
can't talk, no. no just you can just listen. <clears throat> yeah, the new boss is out. It's um, it's a poison sludge one. 